Today we have with us Dr. Kumar Mehta, consultant pediatrician and pediatric nephrologist and a true stalwart in her field. She is going to share with us her experiences and we are going to share, have a small talk on urinary tract infection. What are the common symptoms of urinary tract infection? The symptoms of urinary tract infection differ according to the age of the baby. A very small babies up to two to three years cannot express themselves and so they may manifest with just fever, very high fever with chills or seizures sometimes. Uh, they have failure to thrive, poor feeding, sometimes they are excessively irritable and in general these are the vague general symptoms. And that's why it is very difficult to pinpoint the infection to the urinary tract and many a times it is missed or inadequately diagnosed and inadequately treated. Bigger children like school going children can express themselves so they usually complain of again fever, pain in abdomen, vomiting and some of the urinary symptoms especially if the urine infection is in the bladder like frequency, burning or you know hesitancy, sometimes you know they have a foul smelling urine or a white color urine. So one can understand that the infection is in the urinary tract and it's hence much easier to diagnose. Uh, could you tell us how the approach differs in the younger children, the infants, as compared to the older children, the school going children? Younger children, we have to be careful that it's not just a urinary tract infection. Possibly there could be some underlying structural malformations or developmental defects which make them more susceptible to urinary tract infection. Some of them have what we call as obstruction or they have dilatation of the pelvis and the ureters. These are birth defects or they have polycystic kidney disease. So one doesn't stop at just diagnosis and treatment of the urinary infection, but one needs to do some more tests to find out whether there is any structural lesion or not. For example, one needs to do ultrasonography of the kidneys. In recent times, many of them come with the sonography done before the birth of the baby, showing some abnormality like hydronephrosis and the urinary tract infection is over and above. While bigger children about the age of 5 years, these defects are less likely to be there and also the severity of the infection is also less. So though the diagnosis is by the same test like routine urine examination for pus cells and urine culture to find out which are the organisms causing the urinary tract infection, bigger children more often than not usually do not require further tests like sonography. What is the importance of diagnosis and treatment of urinary tract infection? The main difference and the seriousness of the urinary tract is when the bacteria affect the kidneys. Because if the bacteria have directly lodged themselves in the kidneys and if there are some structural malformations there is likelihood that the urinary tract infection will recur again and again. And with every attack of urinary tract infection of the kidney, as evidenced by high fever and you know poor appetite, etc., there is a risk of a, what is called scar formation or irreversible damage to the kidney. And multiple scars usually can leave behind permanent damage, especially if both kidneys are affected in the long run. Few of these children, not all of them, may go into what we call end-stage renal disease, high blood pressure, so on and so forth. How common is it in children? Uh, in children in school going age, it is more common in girls. Around say 2 to 7.8 percent of the school going girls will have one urinary tract infection during their school age. While in boys it is less common in the school age, between 1 to 2 percent. But it's the reverse in children below the age of one year, where boys have more prevalence of urinary tract infection than girls. 
probably because they have more chances of having the defects of the urinary tract. So it's quite a fairly common disease. I mean, it's not one of those very uncommon infections. Uh, Ma'am, that comes to how does one prevent urinary tract infection? What are the steps and that can be taken at home as well as what can be advised by the doctor to prevent urinary tract infection? Number one, I think the mother should be aware that it is a not uncommon, you know, disease. Number two, they should be willing to what we call collect a sample of urine appropriately because that forms the gold standard of the diagnosis. For that, they have to collect the urine after cleaning the part directly into a sterile bottle. Number three, of course, once the urine is sent for examination, their pediatrician would be willing to help them out by starting the drug therapy as early as possible. Because if the medicine appropriate for the urinary tract infection is delayed, and if one uses the medicine after say a week or so, already some of the damage has been done. So, index of suspicion, early diagnosis by collection of the urine properly and starting the treatment within 72 hours of high fever. This forms the key issue in prevention of a second urinary tract infection. Goes without saying as has been mentioned earlier, if the child is a boy below the age of 2 years, then the further tests will be advised by the pediatricians and they should undergo all these tests to make sure that there is nothing missing like an underlying disease. Until the tests are completed, the child may be required to be put on a small dose of an antibiotic to prevent the infection from occurring. The other way of doing it is the cleanliness, the perineal hygiene as we call. Every time the child or the baby passes urine, in the boy, the prepicial skin, the skin covering the you know, urethral opening should be little bit pulled and the area should be clean with flowing water and then going backwards, the anal region should be clean because the infection occurs from the anal region into the urethral region and both these places are quite contiguous or very close to each other. So the risk of infection is high if the cleanliness is not maintained. We also advise the mothers not to use diapers because diapers give comfort to the child but the child does not protest when there is a, you know, the diaper is moist and then the mother does not clean the child as often as she should. The third important thing we always mention is to give plenty of liquids to the babies especially after the breastfeeding is stopped, so that there is a continuous flow of the urine. By the good flow of the urine, many of the organisms which are there in the urine can get washed out. And especially in the girls, the perineal hygiene is very important and the treatment of thread worms. Sometimes there are small worms lurking in that area and if one doesn't treat, then again there is a risk of contamination, as we say, of the urinary parts with the stool. So these are some of them simple measures but very effective. Uh, Ma'am, lastly we would like to ask you how often do we see complications in such patients either uh, on treatment or even uh, if they are not been given treatment? Younger the child, more risk of complications. If you have a urinary tract infection in the newborn, that's the only age where the infection is not confined to the urinary tract, but it can get into the blood. So the baby may have what we call septicemia, that means a blood infection. And this is the only age group where one may lose a child, which begins as a urinary tract infection. Subsequently, the complication is not so much related to the, it's not a life-threatening type of an infection. But as I mentioned earlier, if one misses the diagnosis of an underlying structural malformation, then the kidneys may get affected over a period of time with recurrent uh, problems. And there is an entity which is quite common, which is called VU reflux, was like a urethral reflux. That means the infected urine from the bladder gets into the kidney every time the child passes urine. 
and that makes the situation more serious because the kidneys are absolutely under you know sort of a effect of the infection all throughout and this causes the scars up to the age of 5 years so the risk of the complications is much more till the age of 5 years in the long term basis it's a very few number of cases hardly i think i would put it down if you want the statistics less than 1% with recurrent urinary infection will ultimately land in what we call kidney transplant or a, over a period of maybe 10 to 15 years so the risk to life is not great but of course the renal scars are important complications and occasional newborn if it is not detected early enough one may lose the child thank you ma'am we would like to thank you for sharing your experiences with us